Getting your first data analyst job will undoubtedly be the hardest out of all the data analyst jobs you will get throughout your career. I've applied to hundreds of jobs so far, and I certainly didn't get most of them. In fact, I got rejected by most jobs, which is completely normal. Through each rejection though, I learned something, an area I could improve upon, a skill set I'm missing, and with each application, I became a better and better candidate. I'd like to share with you my experience of applying to a bunch of corporate jobs combined with years of experience working in the financial services industry and exposure to lots of colleagues and recruiters and hiring managers to give you my take on how you should apply for data analyst jobs depending on how much relevant experience you have. For each of the levels, I'll focus solely on the most important aspects as having a strong resume, an awesome portfolio, the right technical and analytical skills, an optimized LinkedIn profile, more on this later, would be the bare minimum, a good baseline to start from. Let's start with level one, where you have no relevant experience and no uni degree. I'm not gonna lie, this is a very tough starting position, but if you're truly determined to become a data analyst, there are many things you could do to achieve your goal. Your number one priority will be to get hands-on relevant experience. And here, depending on how old you are, I'd recommend doing different things. Say if you're in high school and you don't want to go to or cannot attend university, for whatever reason, you could apply for apprenticeship or trainee programs. These are usually tailored for students who are just about to finish high school or have just finished high school, and most large corporations have programs like these. The names of these programs might differ by country. They might be called uh, apprenticeship, work experience, smart start, or trainee programs. But the idea is the same, to give you an opportunity to develop your skills, get real life experience, and get paid enough at the same time. Even if you don't go for a specific data analyst apprenticeship program, as long as you'll work with data as part of the role, you should be fine. You could use these programs as a stepping stone to accelerate your journey to become a full-time data analyst. Now, if you're not in high school and you've been stuck in another job that you don't like and are super interested in data analytics, I'd recommend focusing on learning the technical skills required, getting well-known certificates, building a strong portfolio to showcase your skills, writing a great resume, and optimizing your LinkedIn profile. More on this towards the end of the video. I made separate videos already on how to become a data analyst, how to write a resume that landed me many job interviews, along with various portfolio projects where I go through everything in detail. I'm gonna leave the links in the description below. Feel free to check them out. But just as a quick summary, I'd start with learning Excel, then SQL, then a BI tool of your choice. I'd go with either Tableau or Power BI, then a programming language of your choice. I'd recommend Python. In terms of certifications, I'd go with the well-known ones, say the Google certificates. I actually already put together a data analyst roadmap that you can check out at datawithmo.com. I'll also leave the link in the description below. I have to emphasize here that this is the only level I haven't personally experienced as I do hold a master's degree in finance and economics. But I have come across people throughout my career who have started as trainees and apprentices and self-taught data analysts who have gone on to have amazing careers. If any of you watching this have ever been part of a program like this, or if you're a self-taught data analyst, or if you're currently teaching yourself to be a data analyst, please feel free to share your feedback in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all appreciate to hear your thoughts and insights. Moving on to level two, where you still have no relevant experience, but you have a uni degree. This is a level I can easily relate to and recall, given it was only five years ago that I was applying for jobs during my master's degree. Here, depending on whether you just graduated or are about to graduate, or if you had already graduated a while ago, say anything over three years, I'd approach applying in different ways. If you're about to graduate or are a fresh graduate, I'd focus on applying to graduate programs, which are tailored specifically for people in their final year of higher education or people who have just gotten their degrees. You probably won't find a data analyst graduate program per se, but if you can get onto a program that allows you to develop the technical skills, that would be more than ideal. I started my career as a risk graduate working within the credit risk space in the financial services industry, 
which was an amazing place to start given the amount of data that the risk department deals with. Think of credit card transactions, student loans, car loans, mortgages, customer data, millions and millions of rows of data ready for you to clean, transform, and analyze. Graduate schemes are great because they usually involve various placements ranging anywhere between 6 to 12 months, so it's a great starting place as you can work in different teams and departments and figure out what you actually want to do, which tends to happen by figuring out what you don't want to do. Now, if you graduated a while ago and you went off to do something else or traveled or life just simply steered you in different directions and decide that now is the time you want to become a data analyst, I'd focus on the data analyst roadmap, the resume, the portfolio, and the certifications outlined in level one. I'd also highlight your degree if you studied something relevant, say computer science or data science, or something that involves math and statistics, or any courses or modules that are relevant to data analytics. Let's move on to level three, where you would have some relevant experience. For example, in your current job, you do some data entry and work with data on a day-to-day -day basis. You may not be doing advanced analytics, but you are actively working with data. Let me pick a specific example within banking. Say you're a relationship manager and you cover business banking clients. Your current tasks and responsibilities are obviously very different from a data analyst's tasks, but you are using spreadsheets to collect data and you are creating some tables and charts, which then you use in client meetings and presentations. This would be a good relevant experience that you should highlight at the top of your resume. Now, be careful though, and keep in mind that you're applying to a data analyst job. So try and emphasize the data work you do in the background to support clients rather than how you can create shiny PowerPoint presentations and how you're a confident and clear communicator when it comes to client meetings. Of course, stakeholder management skills are really important and you do need them as a data analyst. But given it wouldn't be the primary skill set recruiters and hiring managers would be looking for, don't put them at the top of your resume. You could instead take a different angle and highlight how good of a data storyteller you are, how good you are at communicating to clients, how good you are at getting your message across using data to a non-technical audience, rather than how good you are at communication in general and at creating PowerPoint packs. And finally, level four, where you have plenty of relevant experience and you're looking to transition into data analytics by applying the skills you've acquired throughout your career. Let me use another specific scenario, my personal experience scenario actually, to demonstrate how you could apply the skills you already have to data analytics. When I was working as a risk graduate and a credit portfolio manager, I was working with lots of data in Excel, SQL, and Python on a daily basis. My focus was around identifying trends within the portfolio, managing credit exposures, making sure that we don't breach country or sector limits, or doing portfolio concentration analysis. Even though the role was not a data analyst role, the skills I needed and acquired throughout the years were totally applicable to data analyst tasks, such as pulling data from various data sources, cleaning and transforming data, and getting insights out of data. So if you are currently in a job like this, where your skills are easily transferable to data analytics, I would certainly put this relevant work experience at the top of your resume. You should also optimize your LinkedIn profile so that recruiters can find you. If you build a good profile, you won't even have to apply for jobs. Recruiters will reach out to you and work with you so that you can get a job. I would 100% recommend working with recruiters as their number one goal and your number one goal are the same. They want you to get a job so that they can get paid. And you want to get a job so that you can get paid. Pretty simple, right? So how can you optimize your LinkedIn profile? Recruiters who look to fill data analyst positions will certainly look for keywords like data analyst. So first and foremost, you should try and include data analyst somewhere on your profile. The best place to put these keywords would be in the headline. Make sure to write your own headline as you can include as many keywords as you want to as if you go with the default LinkedIn option, you're restricted to just one title. Now, even if your role is not a data analyst role, you can include data analyst somewhere in the headline if you have the necessary skills and or certifications and or you've done many data analyst portfolio projects. Next. You could include links to your portfolio projects or maybe even your own website that showcases 
all your technical skills in the featured section. Having your projects here really makes them stand out. After that, you'd want to optimize your bio. Recruiters looking to fill data analyst jobs are looking for certain skills, so make sure you include keywords like Excel, SQL, Python, or Tableau or Power BI in the About section. When populating the work experience section, focus on highlighting relevant experience. Include three to five projects for each role and don't just state what you did. Make sure you communicate why you did what you did and how what you did benefited your team or your organization. Focus on the business problem and the benefit of solving the business problem. Use the licenses and certifications section to include any relevant certifications you've picked up over the years. Recruiters sometimes also look for specific certificates, so if you have the one thereafter, it increases the likelihood of them reaching out to you. And finally, include a friendly profile picture and banner image. I know a lot of people go with serious faces, but I think a warm, smiley picture is a great way for making that connection with the recruiters a lot more personal. And probably the most important advice, whether you have zero experience or you have plenty, is to not give up. It sounds cliche, but the difference between successful and less successful people is not actually their ability to succeed. It's their ability to come back from defeat, from failures, from rejections, work hard and improve and better themselves. I got rejected well over a hundred times, maybe even over 500 times, and the first one really hurt. So did the second, and so did the tenth one. Of course, these rejections got to me. It was sad, frustrating, discouraging. I was thinking, this is not fair. Clearly, I'm more than capable of doing whatever the job spec says. And this was definitely the wrong approach. The moment I stopped thinking about the rejections and started thinking about why they rejected me and how I could improve so it doesn't happen again, everything changed. I got my head down, sucked it up, and worked relentlessly. And it's this work ethic, the countless hours of learning, the numerous days spent in my room alone building and enhancing my skills, this is what landed me my job. Don't live in the past, live in the moment and think about the future. I know that I had the opportunity to pursue my master's degree, which is not something that everyone gets to do. I know there are a lot of people who are in worse situations than me, but I also know that there are a lot of people who are in better situations than me. I don't compare myself with others. I'm just trying to do my absolute best and be a good person. Everything I've achieved since I left my family home when I was 18, I've achieved through my own hard work, which I am really proud of. So I hope that you can take inspiration from my experience and keep on going. Remember, it's not success that defines you. It's your ability to come back from failures that defines who you are. Thanks so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.